All right, this is the final exam wrap up to uh, the study guide for class 4A. Um, so we have taken care of containment, uh, the Marshall Plan, implementation of total war. So we need to get uh, the next one, reasons for U.S. involvement in World War I and World War II. World War I, uh, the involvement uh, or the reasons why the United States got involved, uh, British propaganda. Uh, the British were, uh, you know, supplying us with information that was decidedly uh, anti-German. And uh, it, this allowed us to become more sympathetic uh, towards the Allies. Uh, the Zimmerman note, or the Zimmerman telegram. This was from Germany to Mexico. If Mexico joins the Central Powers, uh, Germany will ensure that Mexico will get some land uh, that they lost to the United States during the Mexican-American War. And the last one. Uh, Germany was violating our freedom of the seas, or the, the unrestricted submarine warfare. Alright, next one, the purpose of the League of Nations and the United Nations. Um, we can kind of put those together, um, and this is an international community of nations uh, with a goal of ensuring peace in the world and diplomacy which is like talking about it over war all right what else do we have to do oh uh, the role of government and capitalism and communism i like to combine capitalism with laissez-faire, laissez-faire capitalism, you'll uh, often hear it called. And so this will hopefully allow students to remember laissez-faire, hands off. Uh, the government stays out of the economy. And this means that business leaders are the ones who make decisions. Communism, government controls or government makes the economic decisions all right we do not have the definition of nationalism all right nationalism uh, we saw this as one of the causes of World War one uh, prior to that we saw unified countries like Germany um, and Italy both uh, were able to be unified um, uh, with nationalistic leaders and nationalistic uh you know agendas what is this it is loyalty to one's loyalty or pride i, I guess i should say in one's uh culture or country All right, the cause of the Atlantic slave trade and the experience of those who travel through the Middle Passage. Uh, just think back to the film Amistad and the uh, experiences that Cinque, um, you know, uh, went in uh, the, the, the passage that Cinque uh, had to endure uh, on its way from West Africa to the West Indies uh, in the film Amistad. Uh, so the cause of this Atlantic slave trade, uh, there's a demand for labor thanks to cash crops in the new world and the experience is hot lots of death or ventilation you know just a a really horrible or horrific ordeal all right ideas of enlightenment philosophs uh hobbes is not really an enlightenment philosoph but uh, he believes that men are naturally wicked and that life is brutish, nasty, and short. Um, because of this, he believes that people enter a social contract in which you give up. One gives up rights to an absolute ruler in exchange for order. Lock, natural rights, life, liberty and property all right purpose of the government is to protect these rights 
influential in the writing of the Declaration of Independence. All right, next up, what do we have next? The importance of the English Bill of Rights. Uh, this is this one is pretty easy. Just think about why the um, the Bill of Rights, uh, you know, the first ten amendments to our Constitution are important. Uh, they, you know, I think it's really easy for uh, students to rattle off some of the uh, the rights that are protected in the uh, in our American Bill of Rights. You know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of press. You know, uh, freedom to petition, freedom of assembly. Uh, these are you know listed out in our First Amendment. Um, right to a jury, uh, right to an attorney. Um, you know, uh, rights that are not granted to the federal government in the Constitution or granted to the, to the states. Um, rights from, uh, you know, unreasonable searches and seizures, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So um, it grants, and the English Bill of Rights does essentially the same thing in the sense that they both grant um, rights and liberties to citizens, in this case, English citizens, and you limit the role of the government or the power of the government. Scientific accomplishments of Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton. Uh, Galileo and Copernicus we can put together. Uh, Galileo, Gal, uh, Copernicus comes up with the sun-centered theory of the universe or the heliocentric theory. And Galileo uh, proves his uh, that that this uh, this theory is correct. Newton Newton comes up with the universal law of gravity or gravitation. The impact of the printing press by Johann Gutenberg. Uh, before the printing press, um, you know, if you were copying books or text, uh, they would be done by hand. This was very uh, this was a very long and tedious process. Uh, the printing press, uh, you know, changes all that. And so now you see books are able to be uh, copied in a larger quantity. Uh, therefore, the price goes down. Um, m books are going to be able to be in the hands of more Europeans. Therefore, literacy in Europe goes up. And most importantly, there is an exchange of ideas which come at a quicker rate. Reasons why the Renaissance started in Italy. Um, Italy had the wealthy city-states. Thanks to the trade that was coming from uh, the Middle East into Europe. Think, uh, you know, once again, that's kind of going back to the Crusades. Our increased European demand for goods from Asia and the Middle East. Uh, well, where were these goods coming through or passing through it? You know, as they were coming uh, along the Mediterranean Sea and going into Europe, they would uh, enter Europe through Italy. So wealthy city-states. Uh, these city-states had a large uh, population of bankers. Uh, these bankers will become patrons of the arts. And finally, if this is a rebirth of classical civilization, um, Italy, all right, has classical has the has Italy is the inheritor. I'm going all over the place, and or participant, I don't know, um, if, you know, Greece, Greco-Roman civilization, um, what am I trying to say here, Greco-Roman civilization, um, is a classical civilization, it's the Greco-Roman, uh, you know, uh, lessons, uh, you know, and, 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 and text, and it's the classical civilization that's seeing a rebirth, uh, during this time period, um, and Italy, um, is where, the Greco-Roman civilization first flourished. How about that? It's a struggle, but I think we got through it. All right, what else do we need to know? And that is it. Um, I am going to take a second um, and scroll back up to the very top. And I'm just going to stop it right there. All right, and that way you can pause it and you can write down 
what you need. Now let's scroll down. You can pause it. And we can scroll down. You can pause it. Scroll a little bit more. Scroll just a little bit more. And the last one. Uh, don't worry about the stuff at the bottom, number 64. Uh, that is just um, class 1B, the start of their study guide. So don't worry about that. All right, uh, you know, just a couple things here at the very end. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, make sure that you're taking your time on this exam. Uh, there will be some things um, on this exam that we did not get to talk about this year. Um, do your best on those questions. Uh, try to eliminate any answer choices uh, that you know to be incorrect. Um, and therefore, you know, increasing your chances of answering each question correctly. Uh, anyway, uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, and feel free to use the study guide, um, you know, to help you study uh, for the exam. All right.